Hi, this is James Gardner, this is Newset Geek, and I'm at the Black Magic stand again, and behind me is Resolve 12. Now, why am I here? Well, one of the big um, topics of the show, probably the topic of the year, is, of course, high dynamic range. Now, I've, it was covered a lot this year, and, and there was um, a lot of news about high dynamic range, too. Coming straight into the show, Amazon announced that they will uh, be streaming high dynamic range to Samsung televisions under, I'm not sure exactly what the deal is, but you'll be able to do, see some form of high dynamic, dynamic range by the end of the year. But at the show, it was made very clear by a number of speakers at the show uh, that you know the standards around high dynamic range are still underway. There's a lot to be done, there's lots of issues and problems we need to still work, sort out, and jumping into it you know, right now may be a little bit premature. Uh, for example, uh, realistically, for high dynamic range, you need screens which have got a 10-bit processing in the back, and that's still not really possible. Um, there has to be standards created in terms of where we're going with peak brightness, and you know we need to know how to make these these um, uh, masters in our edit suites, in our mastering suites. So there's been a lot of talk there. Um, other issues, for example, Lars Borg from Adobe, they're doing a lot of stuff on high dynamic range, took us through some of the issues as, such as converting standard def to high dynamic range and back again. And there's a number of technical problems and uh, with that issue of uh, expanding the color volume and pulling it back that have to sort of be addressed because we can really put this into our workflows because obviously when we, do, when we do go to a high dynamic range workflow, we will be pulling in, in a lot of standard d dynamic range content and it'll be going up to there and back down again and there's a lot to learn here. Um, so what I wanted to take away from this is that we are really heading to high dynamic range very quickly. Um, 3D, high frame rate um, and 4K haven't really had a lot of traction with the consumer market as as has with um, standard def to high on to high HD and the the flat panel flat panels that we all have today so there's a big move to try and build the next you know identify the next mountain to climb and I and identify by the vendors what the next big feature that they're going to um, um, sell all their screens to in the future. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. We're very pleased with that. It's a problem. It's a good problem to have. Um, but we still need to take our time when we actually, you know, taking the right road and getting, getting there, uh, you know, all safe and sound. So, we just wanted to mention that this year, the show. Um, one of the reasons I actually came to uh, to Black Magic is. Blackmagic is releasing 12, version 12 of Resolve, and in speaking to uh, one of the product managers here, Peter from Singapore, it was very eye-opening at the amount of work that Blackmagic has been done with uh, Dolby, and their, you know, look at how, their, you know, their the perspective of how high dynamic range is going to come into our lives as production people. Um, very interesting. I, I recommend you have a look at version 12. It's got a lot lot in there to do with colour management and high dynamic range but I'm sure all the other vendors have too but the nice thing about Resolve that is free and you can get your feet wet at very little cost. Anyway that's James Garner, the Cine Tech Geek at Simpty 2015. I hope you've enjoyed my co coverage. Bye for now.